following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the December 7th magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary Monday. Of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. And these are wonderful markets to go figure that out because we're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I on this magical Monday. And I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. I'm here to serve you, so feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in 877-927-6648. Internationally, 727-445-1044. Of course, you can email me, steve at tfnn.com. I'll try to get to those as well as any any uh, private messages or anything, any requests inside of our uh, Tiger's Den out here. So let's get this uh, show kicked off here on this magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show Right now, we got the Dow trading off 156 points. She's trading at 17,691. S&P down about 20 at 2,072. NASDAQ off about 49 points. Russell down 18. Gold is off 7 bucks. Silver's down 18 pennies. Light Sweet Crude off 233, trading out at 37 bucks. I think that's headed to the $33 ish type level, maybe even lower. Who knows? Natural gas trading lower. Ooh, natural gas trading lower by uh, looks like 11 cents this morning uh, at the uh, 206 level. Uh, lead the charge to the upside. Uh, uh, Stock-wise, you've got uh, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Uh, that is on a, a buyout, so it's trading up uh, at about $90, up $37. Bucks. Let's see here. you got got uh, XBIO Tech. That's up 84%. I don't know. That could be a buyout as well. Panera Bread, that's up $5. Not a lot. Intuitive Surgical up uh, 340. To the downside, Bluebird Biotech off 30 bucks, 36 percent. Chipotle down 13 bucks, two and a half percent. Pioneer Natural Resources up 10. So let's go try to figure out first what the indices are doing. And we're going to take a look at. We need to take a look at different time frames out here for sure. So let's start off by taking a look at. Let's start off by taking a look at the NQ out here. So if we take a look at a 30-minute chart. Here's what we're going to notice, uh, that as price was moving higher, uh, this was into the uh, time frame of uh, Friday's close out here. Price was moving higher, doing it with what? Doing it with our favorite pattern, at least favorite reversal pattern. It was doing it with what? Less relative strength out there. On top of that, to boot, you got one of those uh, nice seventh inning stretch candles, seventh inning waves to the upside. So you had a nice indication of a, either a top, short-term top, a top or that the market was going to be so strong would be able to take out those reversal levels. Well, it hasn't been able to. And then what happened uh, in the overnight hours, uh, really early this morning, around 6.30, we had a nice little uh, market profile that uh, showed up out here, very small box, but gave you a nice, another resistance level up at that top. So now what we've seen, we've seen five waves to the uh, downside. And what we notice out here as we speak right now is we can see that the uh, bulls have felt comfortable enough to try to step in at these lows inside the NQ. And we're talking about the lows that came in at about 11.30 this morning at 46.71. And I say that because the very next 30-minute uh, session from 11.30 till noon, nice little bullish engulfing showed up. Right now we've got a what looks like a bullish engulfing forming, maybe a piercing candle. I don't know. And we're right down at the market profile low on that 30-minute basis. So 46.76 is going to be a key number to pay attention to. We'll go let, take a look at a 10-minute chart. Because this 30-minute uh, session just began at 1:11, so I mean we're at one at one o'clock, so I really can't uh, gauge the 30-minute volume just yet. But what you and I can do is we can go take a look at 10-minute because what's either occurring here is the NQ is forming a bottom 
or it's getting ready to try to bust out the uh, lows. Maybe uh, maybe a B point of an A to B equals C D to the downside. Resistance to the upside here. If, in fact, this is some type of uh, bottom, what you'll want to watch is the area of 4706.88. And that happens to be the uh, TAS market profile high out there on the 30-minute basis. Now, quickly, let's not, not only quickly, but let's go ahead and peek at the 10-minute uh, time frame out here. Let's see what we've got inside the NQ. So we know that price has been coming down and has been trying to uh, potentially bust through a level of support out here. Now, the swing point that we're looking at, is from 1120. So between 1120 and 1130, there were 5,670 contracts. As price came down here, and this was just as we were coming on the air between 1230 and 1, lighter volume. So you got to 4,300 contracts. So the reality is, as we speak right now, not enough volume to bust it down. What you want to be watching is that uh, so is that price point here. We can even see two bullish candles in the uh, 10 minute time frame as well. So again, the level to be watching, 46.71, and the volume there, 56.70 with regard to contract wise. If, in fact, that level gets broken out, what we can do is we can just make a, a price projection out here. We'll take a look at our A to B equals CD to the downside. It's going to be approximately uh, this number that I give to you, which is the one-to-one -one takes you to 46.36. Now, at about 46.36, we get down to... Well, we get down to an old box. We're not going to be paying attention to that. So that is to so in this case here, as we speak right now, we've got upside target and we have downside uh, target as well. Uh, and as long as we trade sideways out here, we don't have any confirmation one way or the other. We know that the last test on the way down there was with light volume, but everybody's just coming back from lunch as we speak right now. Now, let's switch over and take a look at the NASDAQ composite out here. And we're going to take a look at the NASDAQ composite because we really have um, one potential bullish pattern that is in play out here. It's not going to take place today, but you can see as I go ahead and I move in on the screen out here, what I want you to pay attention to here is the, uh, of course, there's a number of lines going across my chart. We're looking in the upper panel of my uh, screen. In the upper panel of my screen, the little red line and the uh, green line out here, this upper panel, you can see they're getting close to, they're kind of like kissing cousins. Now, that happens to be the 50-day and the 200-day smooth, well, it's not smooth, but the simple moving averages out here. The 50-day simple is right now trading at 49.64, is calculated 49.64. The 200 at 49.75. Now, if, in fact, I'm going to give you the bullish and the uh, bearish side out here, because we have to always look at both sides of the trade. The bullish side is not today. It, it, I doubt that it would happen today. But sometime here in the not-too-distant future, if we see that crossover, that gives you that gives you the uh, the signal of the uh, golden cross out here. Now, the golden cross, everybody talks about the uh, bearish side out there because it's so much easier to go ahead and uh, sell fear. And I'm referring to the general media. But the reality is, and I've, I've done the studies on it. You guys know that. In fact, we took a look at the uh, NDX 100. I'll just I'll put that up on my screen here. So for, well, I'll do that in a moment. First, let's, let's just stay focused here. I'm really talking to myself, obviously. If we take a look at the NASDAQ, we don't have a golden cross just yet. But if we do, it's going to give you a, a fairly bear, a bullish outlook out here. Um, provide, it, it's actually a really good. There's, there's very few moving average crossovers that give you any kind of uh, great profitable signals out there. Uh, but the, uh, the golden cross uh, does, not across all the indices, but it does certainly in the uh, NASDAQ and the NASDAQ uh, composite. Now, we can also see at the bottom of our screen out here that the uh, oscillator is down below the zero level. You're minus 23.65. So if, in fact, price is able to stay down there, not just today, but tomorrow, that says we've got uh, more selling. We'll go take a look at some of the uh, some other longer term time frames as far as where price could head to. But the problem is, is the worse that the market gets, the more that there's going to be a bounce tomorrow. I mean, you and I have been through this uh, drill before, so we're going to go through that drill again. I'll just draw a quick little trend line out here, you know, so that trend is in place. Maybe let's take a look at a, a smaller trend line right now. That trend, in essence, is in place out here. I'm referring to a trend coming off of September 29th. So the reality is everything doesn't look too, too shabby out here. Um, and we've got a market that's gone 300 points, you know, in both directions, Thursday and Friday. And if we just switch over from the NASDAQ composite out here and we take a look at what the VIX index is doing, you can see that the VIX index, the cash indice, which I'm referring to right now, trading at 1693, up 14%. 
above the close from uh, Friday out here. Now, you can also see I've got all of the uh, forward futures contracts for the VIX on my screen out here. You can see we're trading at 1692, and the furthest out that I have in 2016, what is Q again? Q, Q, Q is uh, August. Could have been able to figure that out, uh, is uh, August. You can see we've got quite a contango going, meaning that the uh, forward month, the furthest out we go, which is uh, August of 2016, is priced at 2180, and, you, and the cash index at 1690. So that actually is communicating to us that the traders at this stage of the game are anticipating more volatility or higher volatility going into the uh, future. But what we know, what you and I know, that's important is today you've got a reading of plus 14 percent out here if we finish above 10 percent one day rate of change out here you know what the uh, drill is you got an 80 percent chance of a uh, bounce um, and it can be significant bounce or bottom uh, tomorrow it, 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 it typically takes place within 48 hours but the last year or so it's really been within the last within the uh, 24 hour time period and what you would anticipate no matter what if you see that is wherever we close or the 330 low or whatever you know whatever that low is you would anticipate that you would see futures up overnight. Uh, now, whether it's overnight or it's into the early morning, 6, 7 o'clock, certainly 4 o'clock when uh, Europe would come online. That's what you could, that's what you should anticipate out here. So if you're in a VIX trade out here and you see this uh, and you've made some good money because you traded it in one direction, meaning you anticipated the VIX moving higher, you may want to consider closing that trade out. Uh, if you're trading the futures contract, that'd be a different story. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, now, if we also look at the S&P 500, well, another aspect with regard to the VIX. What's the VIX doing? What's it not doing? What it's not doing today, as we speak, is uh, trading above the 50-day exponential moving average. That's priced at 1705. So the VIX is really trading into a level of resistance out here. It's actually hit high today of 1718. So it's backed off a bit. Of course, if it does close above the 50 day, you've got this con convoluted message out here, meaning when the VIX closes above the 50 day, that's when the most carnage can be done in the market. But then you've got this offsetting, I'm oversold. Uh, at this uh, stage of the game um, and so you know you want to pay attention to that now if I go over and take a look at so that was the VIX what, did I, what was I going to take a look at oh I was going to take a look at the uh, we looked at the NASDAQ composite but if we switch over and take a look at the wider swath of the market the New York Stock Exchange what we're going to see is its oscillator reading right now is down at minus 150, 149.23 to be exact. Now, all of a sudden, we've got the uh, NASDAQ, uh, not the, the New York Stock Exchange, into its extreme oversold level out here. So you get the wider swath of the market that is communicating to us. As we speak right now, if the market were closed right here, right now, what I would tell you is you need to anticipate a bounce. Bounce or bottom? you got to love these markets. you got to love them if you trade on intraday time frames. Otherwise, this is a stock picker's market, that's for sure. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge for daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. 
In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's uh, go take a look at the uh, NDX 100 out here. So take a look at the index. And I want you to notice a couple of different uh, patterns that we're going to take a look at. In the in that uh, first opening segment, we looked at the NASDAQ composite. And what we saw out there was the uh, golden cross that potentially is going to uh, form out here. Now, the first indice to uh, remember, here's the here's the uh, here's the death cross. And the death cross, the reality is it is so it is uh, as if uh, it is it is kind of amazing because uh, if you really go study the two patterns, what you're going to find is more times than not, when the death cross occurs, the market stalls or bottoms. You know, so it's so funny that that's what, you know, they call the death cross when the real death in the market or the lows in the market always took, uh, took place further back on the left-hand side of where that cross occurs. Not always, but the, the majority of the time out here. On the other hand, when you get that uh, golden cross, um, it's a, it, that bullish sign out there, it's not as if the market makes a top. Uh, instead, it is a, it's a very bullish sign. Now, the interesting thing about the NDX 100, you may recall, is back here on October 23rd, we had a nice little gap up inside the market. And then back on November 13th, there was a gap down. Now, those two gaps, what they created was they created that island top inside of the NDX 100. And there's nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. And you can see we're trading inside that island. That island no longer exists out here. So the reality is it's communicating to you and I that it wants to go to higher price. Where is that higher price? Well, the very logical target, if we take a look at the NDX 100 and pull it back on the long-term time frame, the very logical uh, target becomes the uh, January 2000 high. 
and that was at a price point of uh, 48 16 35 so that's its all-time high. Uh, that has not been uh, tagged or touched. Uh, and it looks like that's really what it's trying to do out here. So we've got a daily pattern, bearish pattern, absolutely failed. Taking its place is a very bullish pattern that is in place out here. Now, if the market decides to continue to pull back today, tomorrow, this afternoon, the likely target is it's just going to revisit the low from Thursday which is your 0.618 retracement out here. So that says it a potential target would be about 45.82. I don't, you know, I, I, I you just have to, I've got to look at the intraday patterns as they form throughout the rest of the day, tonight, tomorrow, um, to take a look at some type of other bottoming pattern. Like we know in the end, NYSE, we know it's in an oversold condition. If, uh, if uh, the market sells off, more between now and four o'clock, it gets even more oversold. Uh, that says that the VIX, you know, gets uh, stays above uh, the ten percent one-day rate of change. So it says that, you know, anticipate a bounce out here. We got an inside day going on inside of the NDX as we speak right now. Um, you know, it's just a lot of sideways action out here. Now, that's the, the the other nice thing about the NDX 100 that'll give you and I a signal as to what the market is likely to do is if we take a look at these uh, seventh uh, inning stretch candles, these are Chapman wave counts out here. If you come off of this, is a daily chart, by the way, that, that we're looking at. If you come off of the low from August the 24th and you do your first set of uh, counts out here, um, Count Dracula. What you'll see is that uh, back on November 4th, price was moving higher, doing it less relative strength. Uh, it went ahead and it was up at a, a seventh wave. We saw that move, that first move down into the lows here on the trading day of November 16th. Market takes off topside. If we use a secondary count out here, which is coming off of the September 29th low, you'll see that back here on the trading day of December 2nd, so that was on Wednesday of last week, that got to a secondary count seventh wave and price was also continuing to move higher doing it with less relative strength out there then we had the market pull back pull back looks like into the moving average um, what is it maybe the 40 day uh exponential moving average out here and if we take a look at so what what is it that i'm really trying to say well the next wave count inside of this out here if the highs get taken out this is only if they get taken out, but this is how you anticipate it. This is what I would anticipate. Well, we are only can't really see it uh, for whatever reason. Let me switch over to a different color. There we go. Let's go to a green. It says that right now we're only in that, that second wave. So if these highs get taken out, and the higher high, I believe, is the uh, trading day of November 4th. So that says that's the high that you're going to pay attention to. tells us we're headed to higher price. 47.37 is a number. And it probably means we go higher than the 2,000 highs out there. Doesn't ha that, That's only if we get above that level, which I, I, I anticipate that we will. Uh, do that. Not that we, but that the market will do that. Or at least the NDX, which is a strong like bull. And, and actually, if we take a look at today's volume, just out of curiosity, let's go take a look at the queues. They've done volume of 16 million shares today. It says you do about 27 million. That's just if we use straight line math. So if we take a look at straight line math on, uh, on Friday, you were up with, well, that's a good question. I have to turn my volume bar on. That makes it a lot easier. Okay. Friday, you were up with 40 million. Today, you're pulling back with 27. Hmm. Sounds to me like this market still wants to move higher. I'll go find my Santa Claus hat and have it on. We come back to the next segment. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesamento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up to the second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is off uh, 161. S&P is off uh, 19 points. So if, if we were taking a look at the queues there real quickly, again, volume-wise, um, you were down with 42 million shares on December 3rd. Today, you're going to do about 24 million shares, give or take. Um, like, let me just punch it in right now. Let me see. So we're at uh, 16.4, 16.4, 27. Yeah, so it really hasn't changed much. So about 27 million shares or so. You were uh, so down. So, so the, we had way more volume to the downside on uh, Thursday. Then you had uh, about the same type of volume to the upside, 40 million versus 42 on Friday. And today you're pulling back on light volume. And it's really that way, I believe, across the board. If you look at the SPY here, Real quickly, looks like that should do about 96 million. You were up with 192 on Friday, so you're pulling back on light volume. You had 166 the last time you came down to the uh, test of the swing point from November 16th. That's on the SPY. The diamonds out here, uh, they've done, uh, looks like they're actually, they've got volume of probably a brown 5 million, 5.5 to 6 today. Now it was up with 6.2 on uh, Friday. So the diamonds have got more volume in it. Uh, than the uh, Qs and the spies. Let's take a quick peek here at IWM. Just take a look at the volume matrix. Now, the IWM has uh, taken out, right now it's trading right on a, a trend line. Likely that trend line, we'll see the IWM close above it. We may. Um, uh, sometimes these charts here, because of all the studies, get a little bit too 
discombobulated, but we'll turn those off. There we go. So right now we can see, uh, by the way, volume today is 17 million so far. And that says we should do somewhere around 25 million. Now, 20, what is this actually going to test? So it's trying to take out from Thursday where it had volume of 39. So you're down below that low with light volume out here. Uh, but it could go lower, no question. It could uh, get back and test the uh, swing point at about the 115.09 level. That swing point I'm referring to is November the uh, 16th. But volume, uh, the volume matrix out here, as you take a look at the index ETFs, you know, all with some light volume. Now, let's take a look at gold. A lot of requests out here to take a look. Let's go to the first set of requests. Take a look at FCX. Freeport McMoran. But if we're going to do that, you and I have got to first go take a look and see what's going on inside of the Australian dollar. So let's go see what that is doing. And then we'll get a decent gauge out here. Now, the Australian dollar, uh, what we can see, uh, let me turn off those uh, channel lines out here. Give me a moment. There we go. So this is a quarterly chart here for the Australian dollar. Just simple trend line analysis. Oh, by the way, I did, did find my Santa hat out here. So the Santa Claus rally still is in place. If we take a look at the uh, low back in 2001, you had the Aussie dollar trade down to 47 cents, 0.477 out here. Then the next uh, significant low took place back in October of 2008. That was down at about 60 cents. We still have a higher low that is in place as we speak right now, which was July the 1st, although it did close below that trend line. That low, by the way, was 69 cents out here. You're trading at 72 right now. So you're trading right back above that trend line out there. If it can stay above that trend line, that's a, a short-term bullish out here. That would bode well for FCX. Uh, but let's get off of this chart and go to a daily chart out here, see what pattern it is that is in place. And on a daily basis, the good news is we continue to see uh, higher lows and higher highs out here. So that is uh, pretty good. Um, and this person is looking for an entry point into FCX out here. So um, as long as this currency pair, because FCX will trade in the direction of this uh, currency pair at a minimum. You also want to probably take a look at oil. Um, so, you know, FCX is obviously being hampered by that. Uh, so there may be better... I guess the question I would pose to the person who wrote in is, are you trying to take this trade because of what um, Carl Icahn is doing or for some other reason out here? Um, if we take a look at, now let's go back and take a look at FCX itself. And Freeport McMoran. Uh, see, we've got 31 million shares today. Uh, this is taking out a previous swing point out here. Uh, this had broken out, by the way, on August 27th with 107 million shares. Maybe that was when things leaked that Carl was in it, or maybe it was over here. Maybe it wasn't. But here's what we know is it's trading below the August 26, 2015 swing point. Uh, what looks like maybe with volume, we're doing so far today. 31.8 million shares versus 52. Yeah, 52. So uh, it's trading actually below the August 26 swing point with volume. Let's put this back on a weekly time frame, see if there's any other potential targets out here for FCX, Freeport, MacBrand. So my answer would be, uh, no, today's probably not the day to be buying Freeport. This is interesting. So let's get rid of that line out here, uh, and let's put in a new line of potential support. FCX is trading all the way back to the uh, lows in 2008. It's trading below that. The low was 785. You're at 736 out here as we speak. Um, so where's FCX is probably headed towards the uh, price level of maybe about $5.13 out here. That takes you back into 2002. So there are way better mining equities out here that maybe you want to give some consideration to. There was another request for, our, I think it was RCII, uh, Rental Center, I think it is, RCII. Let's take a look at this. This also looks like a, a stock that is in some serious trouble. Um, this is, if I put the long-term chart up here, let me put a monthly time frame. Uh, this it looks like the actual IPO day, well, uh, week, because I'm not, or monthly, was back in uh, February of 1995. And if we take a look at this, I've got two trend lines on here. Um, and if we take a look at some different trend lines, it looks like this is actually headed back to the uh, lows from October of 2008, right around 997. So there's some bottom fishing that's going on out here. Um, I would say if you're trying to play individual stocks, 
you know, these two may not be the ones that you want to consider. I had a request to take a look at uh, gold. Let's see, we've got one, two, and the GDX out here. So if we go take a look at those, let's go see what's going on. Let's take a look at the, the GLD. Let's look at that on a daily basis. Speaking of volume, let's see what we've got out here inside of the uh, GLD. And uh, GLD is trading at uh, 102.83, 2.5 million shares. That sounds like late volume to me. So 2.5 million says it's going to do somewhere around four. Uh, Four million shares. What did it move up with on Friday? Moved up with, I'm going to move this over here for you so you can read it along with me. Moved up with 10.6 million. So 10.6 and you're pulling back with about four. So the question is, where is gold pulling back to? Well, let's go take a look at the daily contract here for gold. And let's go see what it says. It's trading off uh, 10 bucks right now at 10.74. So it is trading below one of its uh, market profiles out here. Let's uh, get that populated on our screen. I believe that was right around 10.70. Well, it's probably trading right at it. 10.74 to 10.70. Oops. Let's go see where those profiles are at. So you've got a weekly... Oh, the daily bottom is 10. It's a gold contract, right? It is, uh, okay, 1076 and 1075. 1076 is the, is the uh, 120 minute time frame. 1076 is also the 300 minute time frame. So if gold closes below that, where is the next level of support? It becomes 1060. That becomes the bottom of a brand new weekly profile that just popped up on my uh, screen out here. So, if you, which would say you'd get all the way back down to uh, Friday out here. So, what you're looking for in gold today, the question is, can it hold 1076? You got to light, you got to pull, you got to pull back on light volume. Here's how I would suggest that whoever's, who, those of you that are trying to trade gold or want to get in on gold or the GDX, is that. As opposed to, because you see this pullback in gold uh, could take place overnight and then take off. And, you know, and, and you're trying to get into uh, some equity positions out here. I would say, uh, based on the light volume that we just looked at in the GLD, is you just simply use a wider stop if you're going to go ahead and get into those trades. So give it larger room. Uh, make sure, you know, maybe take half of your position. So take, uh, instead of taking 1% times your trading capital, use a half a percent. So if it's a hundred grand, you know, it would have been a thousand, just make it 500, 500 would be your risk. And make sure you use it to stop that is uh, at least you know, take a look at the average true range and typically multiply that times 1.618. Uh, and just use a wider stop. That just simply means you're going to have fewer shares out there. Don't put in more risk and you can use it as a trading plan to try to build your position. That would be, you know, that would be one of many ways that you could take a look at it. But what we know is that gold is pulling back with light volume doesn't mean that it can't pull back further. Uh, of course, what looks like is putting some pressure inside of Goldilocks is the strength inside of the U.S. dollar index out here. Of course, that strength, this is a little counter trend rally that's going on as we speak right now after that big huge move down from a couple of days ago uh, let's look at the uh, euro take a look at the euro versus the u.s dollar um, the euro here uh, is potentially forming if if tomorrow it doesn't look like it'll do it today uh, if at any point now it doesn't have to be tomorrow but if on tuesday wednesday thursday friday give it even friday out here let me turn one of these uh, tools off here if we see a uh a close above, a move above the high from two days ago, and that would be a dollar nine, one point zero nine eight one. You would have one of the uh, one of the few uh, continuation uh, candles, Japanese candlesticks out here. Uh, that would be the rising three uh, pattern out here. Now, the way that the Japanese traded, aggressive traders, they don't look at the high of that candle; they just simply take a look at the close of that candle, which would be one point oh nine three seven. So if, in fact, uh, that's what we see, that would say that the euro is just doing nothing more than just working off some of that huge uh, move to the upside from a couple of days ago. And that would say to the upside, and that big huge, I mean, you talk about a key reversal day out there. That's a, a beauty. And it looks more like what the uh, euro is doing is trying to set up the B to a C of an A to B equals C to the upside, eventually taking it to the 111 area out here. And uh, you'll know that if, in fact, you see a close of 1.0. 981 out there. That's on the euro versus the U.S. dollar. So I think that takes care of uh, everything that was requested. 
Um, if we take a look at the GDX, just to be very specific, I suppose the GDX out here, uh, G, and we'll just take a look at its volume matrix as well. GDX is traded volume so far today of, let me get it out here, 18.3 million shares. So 18.3 says you do probably by 27, 28. It was up with uh, 76 million back on the uh, trading day of Friday. So the likely target here, get rid of this camel. Uh, the likely buy area inside of the GDX, uh, one, you could take a look at where it broke out from. That's basically almost where you're trading at right now. 1423 is the number you're at 1427. If I look at uh, TAS market profiles out here, what do we have? Uh, you know, you're quite a ways away from the uh, daily resistance zone, which would be 1388. That could be another potential buy area. But you've got a light volume pullback as we speak right now inside of the GDX. Okay, let's take a look at light sweet crude. I mentioned uh, a $33 price uh, tag. We got to switch over to a different. We're going to look at the continuous contract out here. And if uh, somebody asked me something inside the den, just re, re uh, post. I guess copper. So I see copper is a request. If there's something else out there, just repost that for me, and I'll be happy to uh, get to that. Let's look at uh, light sweet crude on the continuous contract out here. That says that uh, light sweet. Let's put this on a long term chart let's put this on the uh, quarterly time frame now my data unfortunately right now only goes back into the 2002 time frame i mentioned 33 dollars that's a logical price point because it happens to be the swing point low back in january of 2009 33.20 is a number you're 37.74 does not mean that uh, it can't go lower than that that just becomes the next target to be looking for inside of light sweet crude just to get some kind of volume matrix out here let me see, USO, let's see if that, what, uh, what kind of volume was going on, if we can, inside the USO out here back then in 2000. You can see prices trading below it. Um, that, that's fine. Remember, you know, the USO is really trading off the contract out here. But I just want to see volume matrix. So in 2009, on a quarterly basis, it was 2 billion shares. You're in there with 1.3 billion, and uh, so you're coming back with lighter volume is what it looks like to me. Yeah, you're definitely coming back with lighter volume out here because the quarter is going to end in, uh, I don't know, 15 trading sessions. How many more trading days do we have in the uh, month of uh, December out here? So it looks like for the quarter you're coming back with light volume on a monthly basis. Not that you can hang your hat on that, but it is interesting to take a look at, more than interesting. In February of 2009, you had 750 million shares. And, uh, you know, you were doing last month, you did a 517. So you're really coming back into that area with light volume. Yes, you're trading below the swing point on USO, but we're just using it as the benchmark as oil is pulling back. Um, I don't know that you need to really step in front of that uh, freight train out there, but if you do, just make sure you are using stops out here. Uh, copper. Let's go take a look at Copper Tone, see what it's doing on the uh, current contract. Uh, and we actually probably need to take a look at the uh, continuous on Copper as well. But right now, trading out at a little above $2, so that's natural gas. Sorry about that. We're looking at the uh, current contract here. No, must have changed over. It had to have rolled over here. Uh, so in the case of copper, I don't, I'm going to assume that we're, well, I won't assume anything, but let me go ahead and at least put up the uh, uh, January. Oh, that didn't work. Well, while we're at the break, I'll go figure out which contract we're on inside of copper, and we'll take a look at that. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. 
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. It's true. Life is all about choices. At EverBank, they're making it easy for you to make a smart one with this special cash offer. Open a new yield pledge money market account with funds from another financial institution or deposit new funds into an existing yield pledge money market account and you could earn up to a $500 cash reward. And if you're opening a new account, you'll also get their new higher six-month bonus interest rate along with their yield pledge promise that ensures your yield will always be in the top 5% of competitive accounts at banks nationwide. Open a new account or add to one. It's your choice. To qualify, you must meet balance and other limited time offer requirements. Go to everbank.com forward slash TFNN for details and deposit options or speak with one of the banking specialists at 1-855-750-4051 for more information. You must act by December 31st, 2015 to be eligible. Everbank is a member FDIC. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, as we take a look at the March contract for 2016 here in Copper, we see it's trading uh, very close to the uh, support of its uh, weekly market profile low out there. So this may be up against some pretty decent support, $2.04. Uh, if it uh, cracks through that area, the next level of potential support, now you say potential support is two dollars and a penny out there that happens to be the daily now if we go take a look at the continuous contract we can also see that right around this area and i'm referring to coming off of the lows from december in 2008 all the way to the high that was put in in a sub monthly chart that we're looking at into february of 2011 you can see we're right down to the 0.786 retracement level so we have in essence really three good levels of support for copper if all of these fail, uh, then what we could anticipate is copper moving down into the buck and a quarter type range or uh, from a monthly basis, at least testing the swing point high from December in 2008. That gives you a price projection of about a buck 67. So it looks like uh, now there's no bullish reversal signals or there's no price relative strength divergent pattern. There's no seventh wave move to the downside, at least that I saw as I was looking at some other charts 
during the breakout here. So there's really nothing that uh, says to me other than relying upon these market profiles. I mean, you've got a bullish engulfing candle on November 24th. That says the low of November 23rd, which is $2 basically. Even Stephen, you know, that ought to hold out here. It really looks like it's just a sideways trading range. Which is between two bucks and two twelve out there. So if you are trading copper, um, you know that's what you should be uh, taking a look at. If we go over and take a look, now, nothing has changed really in the market since we looked at it earlier. But let's go take a look at the uh, ten minute time frames out here and see. We we're specifically we were looking at the NQs. We can look at both the ES and the NQ. So we know that we have bulls that are trying to protect this forty six seventy one type area. Just simply and take a look at the candlesticks out here. So the volume at forty six seventy one that took place at eleven twenty fifty six. 600 contracts, then you were down with 4,300 contracts, you're down with 3,200 on the last 10 minute bar, this one you're about one point even lighter volume. So it's really, uh, it's either just uh, building up some energy to take out those uh, lows out here, which is possible, but I can tell you that the energy, the enthusiasm is just not there right now. Inside the ES Mini, it made the low with about 50,000 contracts and then tested with 30. Uh, the last uh, session down, 24,000. So it, too, doesn't have the uh, gusto as we speak right now to take it out. So uh, uh, if we take a look at the VIX index, where is it trading at? That's four, plus 14 percent out here. So you've got volume pulling back, light volume, anticipated bounce. Now, if the market uh, gives back a lot of these losses here, then that uh, that whole pattern, uh, you know, may not doesn't doesn't apply. So it's only if the market stays like this or gets worse out there that's when you would anticipate the uh, bounce. So. As far as anything else in the market, we didn't take a look at any individual. We took a look at a couple of individual stocks out here. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Chipotle, see what Chipotle CMG is uh, doing out here. So uh, they lowered their guidance, a number of other things. Let's see where Chipotle is uh, pulling back to. Can we find where Chipotle is moving to out here? Um, looks like it's uh, coming all the way back to where it had uh, broken out back in 2013. So it looks like 477 may be the uh, target for Chipotle. It could always go test the real breakout area, which is 442. So, folks, uh, hopefully you're having a magical Monday. Stay tuned because it'll definitely be magical because our man David White is up. After David, we've got the Tom O'Brien Show from 3 to 5. So have a uh, magical, magnificent Monday, and I'll see you on Turnaround Tuesday. Take care, folks. Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.